In a previous video, we destroyed a Japanese knife so you didn't have to. The purpose of that video was to show you just uh, what the limitations are on a Japanese knife. And today's video, we're going to refurbish that knife, fix it up so you don't have to once again. And then we're gonna give it away to one of our awesome followers. If you'd like to uh, have a chance at winning this knife, you need to like this video, be subscribed to our YouTube channel and leave a comment down below, letting us know which knife you would like to see souped up for the next video. So what we mean by this is you're going to go through our website, you're going to pick a knife. Uh, we're gonna take that knife and we're going to like I just said, soup it up. Just give it like a cool new handle, uh, polish the bevels on it, make it extra sharp. Just do some cool things to sort of level up a stock knife and see what we can do. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna pass this knife on to Ben, the manager over at the Hamilton store, and he's gonna get started uh, on taking the chips out and reshaping this blade. All right, Ben here. First thing we're going to do is take a look at this knife. Here we have the Tosaichi Ao Super Guto from the Our Japanese Knives Delicate video. Got a pretty good broken tip here, some nasty chipping, and a pretty bad crack. These chips wouldn't normally be too big of an issue to deal with. The crack's going to be the biggest concern. You can see it pretty well here. Normally how we would deal with this is just treat it like a big chip, grind behind it, and then thin the knife. Gage thought it would be cool for this one to turn it into a bunka. So we're gonna try something new here. So just get an idea where we're gonna grind this guy off. Marking off where our grind will be. And just putting some tape behind our line. Make it nice and easy to see what we're doing here. We tried something new with this one. We used a metal cutting disc for a Dremel tool. It ended up working pretty well. Was a little awkward here trying to look through the camera while I was cutting, but Got it off there pretty quick. Was able to just wiggle it off. And so this is going to be our final size. This obviously left a pretty rough tip on the knife. So we're just going to go over to the belt grinder and clean that up. Started off with an 80 grit belt here and just continuing to rough out our shape. Continue to dip the knife in water just to make sure it doesn't take on too much heat. I'm just chamfering the edges a little bit here. Now that we have our shape roughed out, we're just going to go to the wheel. Now that we got our tip and our shape roughed out, we're just gonna go over to the board and see how the profile feels on this after losing so much material. It's feeling quite rocky, so flatten that out a little bit for this little chopper we're going for here. So this is our horizontal sharpening wheel, and we're just going to use this to remove the remainder of the chipping on this knife and get our profile how we want it. Holding at a pretty steep angle here just to get our profile right and get rid of the chips. Now that we're happy with the profile here, we're going to go over to the whetstones to thin this knife up and get it nice and sharp. So we started off with a 200 grit stone and then I just ended up moving through a progression. We actually didn't get any video of it. After I finished up on the stones with all these, I did some hand sanding and just tried to get the finish nice and uniform. Whenever you're working on stuff like this, you find quite a few factory grind lines and stuff that weren't really running the same way as the finish I was going for on this. So, And for that, I just used some sandpaper and stone slurry to get the finish that we settled on. And now I'm going to pass it over to Gage to make a new handle for this bad boy. All right, so step one is going to be deciding what materials we want to use. I found this really cool curly maple and we're going to use this turquoise as the spacer. Next step, we're going to cut everything down to size. This is going to make it easier to glue up and sand down. Next, we're going to mark the middle on all of our pieces so that we know where to drill. Next step is gonna be cutting a slot in our little dowel here. This is where the tang's gonna fit. We don't want this to be too thick because we want a nice snug fit. Next, we're gonna drill all of our holes. 
These holes are going to fit around our dowel and our dowel is going to add extra strength to our handle. We want to make sure we don't drill all the way through this top part here because we're going to sand down the hole and make it nice and square to fit the tang nice and snug. Next, we're gonna glue it all up. I'm using a two-part epoxy here, so we're gonna just use a couple little dabs of that, mix it all up, make sure it's nicely mixed. And then we're going to clamp it down and leave it overnight. Next, we're gonna mark the handle shape. This is gonna make sanding a whole lot easier because we know exactly where to sand the handle to. And then we're gonna get sanding. First thing I like to do is make it into a rectangle. Once we have a rectangle, it's going to be much easier to sand down the facets and, and turn this into an octagonal shape. Now that we have the shape, we're just going to keep on sanding using progressively finer and finer sandpaper. I like to start at a really nice low grit sandpaper to get the initial shape, so I'm going to use an 80 grit sandpaper to start. Next, I'll move on to a 240 grit sandpaper, then a 360 grit sandpaper, then 600 grit, and finally 1000 grit. Now, I didn't use any finishing oil on this. We're using stabilized wood, so that 1000 grit sandpaper should give us a really, really nice uh, glossy finish. And there you have it, guys. There's our handle all done, ready for a new knife. All right, guys, now we're just going to pop the handle onto the blade here. So the first thing we're going to do is torch the tang. This is because we are going to burn it in, as you can see Ben doing here. We use a soft wood on the dowel so that we can heat up the tang and burn it in and get a really nice, perfect, snug fit in there. And this usually takes a couple tries, too, to get it in. Last thing we're going to do after burning it in is give it a couple bonks on the bottom. That's really going to suck the tang down to the handle, make sure it's nice and snug in there. And then we're just going to fill around the entrance with some beeswax here. Usually when you do this, the knife's still pretty warm, uh, but just in case, you can run over it with a heat gun to get it melted down. Last thing we got to do is give it a quick wipe to clean it up, and there you go, guys. This refurb is done. Here it is guys, look at that. We're super stoked at, on how this came out. Uh, the handle is definitely oversized for the knife, but I gotta say, I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, you know, for, for chopping veggies and stuff like that, a nice long handle is always kind of cool. Uh, I dig in the, the curly maple contrast with the turquoise little spacer here. Ben did a phenomenal job uh, reshaping this blade, polishing it nicely, got it nice and sharp. Uh, he's got this really cool like false edge on the, on the tip of the knife here on the spine. All in all, this is gonna make someone really happy, I think. Once again, guys, if you want a chance to win this knife, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment down below which knife you wanna see us soup up next. We're gonna be giving all of our souped up knives away, so Stay tuned for this series because it's going to be really awesome to see what we can do with some of these uh, stock knives. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe for more knife related content. And until the next one, stay sharp. <laughs>